We are back with the She Can channel where we show what is possible. We interview women from all walks of life, from all over the world, on their journey, how they got to where they are today. And today I'm really delighted. I've been looking forward to this interview for a long time with Ross Ben Moshe. And she is an internationally recognized laughter, wellness, and positivity expert and adjunct lecturer at La Trobe University teaching positive psychology and health promotion. You are a global laughter ambassador, Ross, and a regular commentator and writer in Australian media. You wrote Laughing at Cancer, How to Heal with Love and Laughter. And you've got 20 years of experience of empowering people to intentionally smile and have a laughter practice. So that is quite an intro and what a beautiful purpose to have. Tell us a little bit how you got there. Sure. I should actually add that um, my latest book is, is The Laughter Effect. How joy, resilience, and positivity in your life. So um, that um, is my latest my latest thing that I'm adding to my journey. I, I think like so many people, you know, we have a particular idea as to how our lives are going to pan out. And then, you know, that doesn't rarely go to, to plan. So ill health was what sort of stepped in and sort of directed me away from the corporate world into into well initially it was into a nutrition space uh and then it was into more of a, a positivity um and the world of laughter because i was very passionate about mental health and when i went back to do postgrad studies i you know heard lots about you know anxiety and stress and depression and i'm thinking that's not mental health that's mental ill health whereas this experience that i'd had with a laughter yoga session which is simulated laughter, uh, clapping, ho, ho, ha, 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 and deep breathing essentially gave me more of a health bounce than I'd had in years and years sort of going in and out of, uh, you know, various practitioners' um, consulting rooms. So it's been, a, as you mentioned, you know, 20 years from when I sort of had that initial wow, I know somehow I'm going to do something with this laughter thing to then adding, you know, research into the area, you know, writing a couple of books, teaching about it, um, and ultimately living it. That is the critical thing because it's no good if you just preach. You've got to practice. <laughs> Ross, so you really turned your healing journey into your purpose. Um, tell us a little bit more about that power of laughter and those 20 years that you've invested into making this your mission and your purpose and really bringing that out into the world and supporting other people with it. Sure. So really, I think the critical juncture for me was actually 11 years ago when out of the blue, I got a bowel cancer diagnosis. So there's nothing funny about a cancer diagnosis of any kind. Um, uh, however, there was this little voice in my head that said, don't don't give up on this laughter thing. Uh, and so I thought that's what I would do after major bowel surgery. And I also had a temporary, gratefully, ileostomy, which is a bag that, you know, you wear on the outside of your stomach that processes um, your um, food um, and waste, I should say. I physically could not laugh even if I had wanted to. It was a major abdominal surgery. So for several, several weeks, I, I, I could barely breathe, let alone laugh. So that's really where my exploration into this broader notion of now what I call a laughter effect was born. And it started day eight. Um, I was still in hospital. I'd had a harrowing night. I was in a lot of pain and I was calling for the nurse, you know, morphine, morphine. And I would sort of was told that it wasn't my time. And uh, essentially, the, the, you know, the light, you know, cracked in through the, the curtains, breakfast was wheeled in. And in the olden days, you know, 11 years ago, you used to have to write what you would like for your next meal with a pencil and a paper. You know, I, I told the, the lovely um, staff that I did not want breakfast but she said, I oh, will leave it here just in case you change your mind. 
Now, at the time, I knew that my boys, aged 12 and 15, were, were going to be coming in to visit mum within a couple of hours, and I needed to get out of this really bad, sad place that gratefully I was not accustomed to being in. And I thought I have to do something to change my mindset. Um, as I say, I was not in the mood for laughing and I couldn't even if I wanted to. But there was a placemat underneath the food and it was like a magnet. And I took this placemat from underneath the, the food and I mapped out a margin in the far left corner and I prompted myself to answer the question, what can I be grateful for about having had this operation? So I began you know, with some resistance and very big writing. I'm grateful that I had the operation in a world-class hospital. You know, next point, you know, I'm grateful for the loving support of my friends and family. You know, I'm grateful for the incredible doctors and nurses. And so it began until all of a sudden I mapped out another margin and kept on writing and writing and all of a sudden, another margin. And soon I was like just so buoyed by all of these things that I was recounting. My writing was actually had got minuscule um, and I ran out of space. And I realised in that moment that when I began that process, I was slumped. I was in pain. I was feeling so sorry for myself. Yet this process had essentially I had physically changed I was upright and I was smiling from ear to ear it was like I was smiling from my insides so much so that when the nurse finally came in to administer my morphine she the room because she is into the wrong patient's room because this was not the lady who was like haranguing her an hour ago so that was my first sort of experience of really being able to tap into our body's source of well-being, the endorphin effect, and, you know, my body's natural inner smile to sort of prompt an outer smile. And that really, as I say, was the beginning of a much broader sort of exploration of really tapping into not just ha-ha-ha laughter, but the energy, the essence of laughter, the essence of joy. And uh, yes, so that was uh, oh, how that's it all so began. Beautiful. I have um, little gooseies everywhere. Ross, what a, <laughs> what, a, what a difficult journey, but how beautifully you've, you've, you've turned that around for yourself and are now doing that for other people. What do you say is your main motivator? I love to transform people's lives. I love to witness people, whether they come to me on an individual level or whether I'm addressing, you know, a large audience, they come in, you know, perhaps not knowing what to expect. You can sometimes, you know, really see, you know, the weight of the world on their shoulder. And when you get a smile or when you get that laughter or when you get that aha moment, that's gold. That's what I want. You know, I'm in the business of, of, you know, like you are, transforming lives. And it's not necessarily something that we see at the time, but, you know, I just believe in just put, putting out that ripple effect that, you know, it's so much of how we feel is, is, is about our mindset. And it's not about thinking it. It's not about feeling it. It's about doing it. It's about doing positivity. You know, if we work it, it works. And, you know, if positivity is sort of like an umbrella or, or joy, you know, there's lots of different avenues to that smiling, laughter, gratitude, uh, self-compassion, um, you know, these micro moments of levity, you know, that so, you know, introducing these strategies and techniques to even cynics, and watching them, you know, being, you know, used in people's lives is, is quite beautiful because I think that humans like to overcomplicate things, you know, and so a lot of what I talk about seems too simplistic to be true, to be powerful. But my goodness me, we cannot confuse simple and simplistic, you know, with significant. Um, and, you know, it gets back to, 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 to really, you know, basics. 
And there's a lot of research behind this, right? I think we need to emphasize that. And that's been mm. done all over the world. And I oh, think 100%. it's not just a sort of, oh, yeah, you know, sure. It's really backed up by uh, science and chemicals in our bodies changing. Well, that's right. So, you know, I think a lot of people are familiar with this idea of, you know, cortisol and the stress hormones, you know, adrenaline. But what I talk about is, you know, is, is ways in which we can activate our dose of well-being. And when I'm talking about dose, I'm talking about dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. So these are the body chemicals that changes when we practice things like gratitude. When we choose to laugh, when we choose to smile, it changes our physiology. There's countless research there in the world of um, positive psychology, neuroscience, um, gelotology, which is the, the study of humour and laughter. Uh, so, uh, and, you know, it's, there's, it's just this richness of incredible, you know, not, you know, say it might look sort of superficial like it's just a smile but it's so much deeper you know if we rewire our brain you know yeah. with these things rosa what would you say are the top qualities you possess that make you so good at what you do well my passion my my absolute passion my you know this is my this is my mission in life and you know i like to think that I sort of, you know, wear my smile um, and that, you know, the authenticity of a bit of in what I do and also, um, and this la next thing is not the, something that's necessarily come easily, those moments where I've, you know, really gone through challenging times, whether it's been grief, whether it's been illness, whether it's been, um, you know, a pandemic, um, and also showing that, you know, I'm human, we're all human, you know, we're all just doing the best that we can. Uh, and that's, you know, the best that we can do. Um, Ross, so what, um, what are you most proud of to date? Mm, it's a good question. You know, I am so proud of so many things of, of you know, just just the steps in the journey. You know, there's no such like an OSS, for example. You know, you have to you have to be proud of every single step that you've taken, even if it's been, a, you know, a perceived step backwards or, you know. So I'm really, you know, proud of, you know, my two books. I'm proud of my family. I'm proud of, uh, you know, the the course that I, you know, have developed at, at my university um, on laughter, resilience and well-being. There, there are just so many things, but it's not just those big things. It's just those, it's the little things. It can be just, you know, I'm proud of just being able to walk down the street and share a smile or share a conversation with someone and actually feel that perhaps I've changed their life for the better in that moment. That's so inspiring. Thank you for that, Ross. And what top tips would you give someone who is, you know, in real need of a uh, a, a change in in how they conduct their life or because they have an illness or whatever what would your top tips be for them the people that are struggling firstly firstly I, I you know I feel I feel for them um you know we all go through ups and downs I think um you know we can't leave these these feel you know feeling good feelings to chance you know, we, there are so many things we can do to actually take control over, you know, how we feel. And, and as we were discussing, it's far more than superficial. So, um, you know, even if you are feeling lousy when you wake up, you know, take a couple of, you know, breaths, place a heartfelt smile on your face. And that is a great way of setting the intention of the day to, to joy. And even if, you know, it's a struggle, it's it, it beats the alternative because it's this ripple effect that we give out. If you sort of start your day with a smile, even if you're feeling anxious, even if you have pain, even if, you know, things aren't hunky-dory, 
the first person that you share in interaction with, you will share the smile rather than the. Mm. So it's 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 this you know this power of intentionality, this power of of choice. I think it's really important to check in with yourself to actually ask yourself what do you need in a specific moment. You know, every day is different. Every moment is different. So sometimes you might need to write things out, you know, to journal through the lens of positivity, to journal perhaps through the lens of gratitude or awe or love. How does that change your story? To seek micro moments of what you want, of goodness in your day. You know, if you're going through a challenging time, it's unlikely to be those big things like the overseas trip, the promotion, the grand wedding. Uh, it's going to be a solution, you know, that you might have with it with a friend, a, a lovely cup of tea, the sun on your face, the warm water coming out of the shower. You know, not every day is good, but there is good in every day. And when we have this sort of conscious practice of actually asking yourself, okay, in this moment, what is going well? What can I be grateful for? Or even what can I be future grateful for? Or how could I potentially find the funny in this situation? Or, you know, if you're feeling the weight, you know, of the world on your shoulders, perhaps don't turn on the news, you know, tune into some comedy, tune into an uplifting podcast, read a, read a book that, you know, uplifts you. So there are so many things we can do moment to moment to change our well-being. Thank you so much for these amazing tips, Ross. So what is in store for you, Ross? What are your plans, goals or dreams for your future? Well, I've got to do the TED the TED talk, you know. That's that's a must. Um, <laughs> another another. I've got a few more books up my sleeve. Potentially a PhD. I'm not so sure. Um, more, you know, courses and offerings, and just you know, just doing just doing more of what I love doing. Um, in no particular order. We'll just see what happens. Leave it up to the powers that be. <laughs> Amazing, Ross. That sounds like there is so much coming for you. And we're so grateful for your level of service and for what you uh, do to, to all of us, helping us, supporting us with this incredible mission of the power of laughter and um, positive psychology. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Ross. Oh, thank you so much. And obviously I'm wishing all of your listeners all of all the very best and um, lots of joy and love. And to read your books for sure. Thank you.